Hi, I'm Annie Sleese, and I'm on the staff at NAMI Delaware. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll be talking about community mental health literacy with two Delaware instructors of youth, teen, and adult mental health first aid. But first, I'd like to clarify a couple of things. Mental Health First Aid is a course offered by the National Council for Behavioral Health. It's not actually a NAMI course. However, NAMI Delaware has had the privilege of training a couple of instructors on our staff and a couple of awesome volunteers who will be joining us in just a minute so that we can offer this within our community. Now, we're going to talk about mental health first aid as it applies to everyone, and we hope that you're tuning in whether you're in Delaware or not, because what we're talking about is, is important. It's about having mental health literacy, the idea of being able to help someone who's experiencing a mental health problem. Almost like think about first aid or CPR. How important is it to be able to help someone who's having a medical problem? Well, a mental health problem is, in fact, a medical problem. It's just harder to identify. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Now, before I invite our two guests in, I'd like to tell you about NAMI Delaware. But first, I need to explain about NAMI. So NAMI stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness. And NAMI is our nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. It's been in operation over 40 years and it was founded by two mothers of adult sons who were experiencing the uh, challenges of schizophrenia. Now, they wanted to form an alliance to help each other and to help other family members supporting their loved ones. Since then, NAMI has, has uh, popped up all over the country, and there is a NAMI in every single state. So if you're tuning in today outside of Delaware, you can find your NAMI by visiting their national website. NAMI.org. As for NAMI Delaware, as I mentioned before, we, we support Delawareans. We support individuals who experience mental illness and also their loved ones. And we also provide awareness events for the general community and various organizations who we work with, like faith communities, businesses, schools. So we do have a couple of events coming up I'd like to make you aware of, and then I'd love for you to visit our website to learn more about our agency. So tonight we have NAMI Connection, which is a peer support group. It's offered virtually, and you can register using our website. NAMI Connection is a support group providing support for individuals who identify as living with a mental illness. It's facilitated by two people who are trained and they identify with lived experience as being a peer. So that means that they live with a mental illness themselves. Now, on Monday, we have a support group for family and loved ones, and that's called Family Support Group. It's also a virtual uh, opportunity, and you can register using our website. And next Wednesday, we have Family and Friends. This is a presentation program designed to bring awareness and information to individuals who are looking to help someone who's experiencing a mental illness. It's, it's a program style event, and it's, it's relatively short. It's a one-day uh, one kind of event. Um, I think it's about 90 minutes long. And we do have a couple other programs coming up this fall. I don't have dates for those yet, but I do want you to keep, um, keep your eye out for them. We have something called Hope for Recovery, which is a multi-session program designed to provide information for individuals and loved ones who are experiencing mental health challenges. And it, is, um, it does just what the title says. It provides hope for recovery. We have a program called NAMI Basics, and this is a program designed especially for uh, parents and caregivers of young people who are experiencing mental health challenges. We're very excited to say that this fall we'll be offering this program in English and a separate course in Spanish. We do have facilitators able to offer this in Spanish, so we're very, very excited to partner with our, with our um, partner agencies who are, who are able to facilitate this with us. So keep your eye out for that. And last but not least, um, we have our conference. Every year we offer an education conference and usually it brings together hundreds of people into one location. But now with the pandemic the way it is, we are offering our conference across a week and virtually. So it will be October 5th through 9th and it will be free. 
So please register, find out what we have offered um, for each day. And if you can't tune into every presentation, if you're registered, you can view the presentations at a later date. So now we're going to, a um, uh, quick reminder about, um, about viewing this uh, video right now. We just wanna make sure you feel um, that you're not alone because you're not. Even if you're sitting alone right now in your apartment or your house, you're really not alone because we're all here to support you. And as we have this conversation, you might hear a personal story or it might remind you of something that brings up some strong feelings. And we wanna make sure that you know how to access immediate support. So we do have a couple of options for you. There's a national crisis text line. You can just text 741741 and immediately get connected to someone who can help you work through what's going on. And also locally, we have the Delaware Hope Line. You can either call or you can text to reach out for support here in the state of Delaware. So now, I, now that we've gone through all of my checklist, now I'd like to introduce you to Sue Mulhern and Chris Mackberry. Hi. Hi, Annie. Hey there. Thank you, for, thank you for being on today. I realize you all are busy, busy. Chris, I know you're at school, right? I am. Yes. And I'm Sue, you're in the middle of your work day or, or your work I day? I am. In my wow. home so, office where I've been for six months. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you both for, for taking some time to chat with us. Let's start with just some introductions. Would you mind sharing not only your professional uh, roles, but then also your connection with NAMI Delaware, and then lastly, your mental health first aid um, qualifications. Sue, you want to go first? Happy to. Hi, I'm Sue Mulhern, and um, professionally, I am a project manager at Christiana Hospital. I spent 30 years working in financial services, high stress jobs, and in the last five months, fortunate enough during a pandemic, did get a new job in healthcare. Um, my personal experience is I was diagnosed about five years ago with chronic and persistent anxiety and depression. I also have many family members with undiagnosed and diagnosed mental health conditions. And I really um, felt it was important to get actively involved with NAMI to better support myself, my family, and my community. So I have been certified to facilitate mental health first aid for adults, higher education, as well as um, youth. Great. Thank you, Sue. How about you, Chris? Hello, I'm Chris McBerry. I am currently the principal at Sarah Pyle Academy here in Wilmington, Delaware, and I've been an educator for 24 years, a principal for 17 years. So mental health and overall well-being has been a cornerstone in what I do all the time for many, many years. I'm also the co-mom of 10 adorable, loving young people. Um, and many of them have their own mental health challenges as well. And so it has been at the core of all that I do. Um, I first became um, aware of NAMI through a presentation that our school nurse, Victoria Rios, brought in um, with Annie, actually, and really recognized the importance of being more educated myself to be the best I could be as a parent and as an educator for all of our children and all of our youth. Um, and from there, just needed to be the change I wanted to see in our systems. Um, I know what I can control for my professional students, um, and I wasn't able to, to control that for my personal children. And so I really wanted to be able to take an active role in making the change systematically. And I'm really excited to be here with you all. Great, and you're trained to teach youth and teen, right? <laughs> Yes, and virtual. mental health first aid. Yep, and and virtual. Okay, great, great. Well, thank you. So, you shared your professional backgrounds and and both very very important, um, bringing that experience to your roles with NAMI and then your uh, involvement with mental health first aid. So, why did you want to become an instructor of specifically mental health first aid? Because it is not the same kind of training as something like with a NAMI program. While there, those are a little lengthy too. The uh, instructor training for mental health first aid is a little bit more significant, right? So what made you take that on? Hi, I'll, I'll kick that off. Honestly, once I realized how common mental health diagnoses and, and it challenges can be, I realized there's not enough conversation about it out there. And I wanted to be able to share with others 
what you can do as a non-medical professional, just a family member, a colleague, a, a friend, a, a community member in your faith community, there's so much that we can do to recognize and support others. And what I call connect the dots. I'm not a medical professional, I'm a volunteer, but connect the dots to get people to the appropriate mental health support. Annie, as you mentioned in the intro, you know, many of us do first aid for physical first aid, learn CPR, learn how to help someone who's choking. Mental health first aid is something we all should also have as community members and family members to recognize signs and symptoms and to support each other and get people to the right resources when necessary. Thank you. Yes. Chris, do you have anything to add? I do. It's so well said, Sue. I mean, it's more about being empowered. Um, as an educator, I think that we have a fundamental role to lead the way for our teachers, uh, for our parents to connect the dots and connect the resources. Um, as a parent, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't living with regret. I made a lot of decisions in the best interest of my kids as um, a younger parent that I wouldn't have done the same way now knowing what I know. And I didn't want any other parent um, and I didn't want my teachers to feel like they didn't have the tools and they didn't have the information. So it's like, I can't get enough. Um, but as a principal, I feel like it's my responsibility to educate other principals so that they can lead the way. It can't just lay on our counselors. It can't right. just lay on our psychologists and on our nurses. This is something we all need to know and recognize so that we can be our very best. So our kids can do their very best, period. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So, so I thought maybe we'd spend some time kind of looking at each of the, the three big um, offerings under mental health first aid. So maybe we should start with the adult course. Sue, you have um, background in, um, or wh why don't we start with just literally the basics. Just tell us what that adult course provides. And you kind of shared a little bit of that before, but maybe getting into like algae and that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, honestly, uh, the easiest way for me to describe the adult course is in four words. Okay. Support others, reduce stigma. Well, and, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and what this course does is it offers a very easy to understand, um, I'm going to say methodology since I'm a project manager, but method for <laughs> us to recognize si signs and symptoms in ourselves and others. And by using ALGE, which is a, an interesting acronym, it gives you quick things to process through in your mind if you believe someone may be going through a mental health challenge. The tools that you learn and actually practice in the class make you more comfortable as a volunteer. Again, I'm going to keep saying this is non-medical professionals. You're a That's volunteer. Right. Gives you the right tools and techniques to work through either an emerging, an emerging mental health situation or potentially a crisis. That's and one right. of the basic things that we learn is mental health signs and symptoms can look similar to physical signs and symptoms. So this class gives you practical ways to try to assess that. That's the A in allergy. It's mm -hmm. assess. Mm -hmm. and um, how we listen non-judgmentally. So it, we work through the process to identify, could this be a mental health situation? Is it a crisis? And fundamentally, it's like any first aid, when in doubt, you call 911. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. Go ahead, Annie. No, great. I, I was just going to piggyback on your, your comment about you're not a mental health professional. You're not the medical clinician. You're not making a diagnosis. I do think people might be leery about taking a class like this, or they might be misled in thinking, oh, after this, this class, I'm going to know how to tell so-and-so that they have this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I find that we all have common sense and it helped me fine tune my natural thoughts just from living life. Sure. And it helped me understand how do I stay calm in the situation? How do I calm down that other person? And again, I loved the practical skills that we were able to practice in this class to really identify and support adults, whether they're at work, whether they're in your family and how to make them feel comfortable that you're going to be with them and get them to the right resources and do everything you possibly can. Again, it's real, it's structured very nicely. There's a lot of interaction in the classes and to get you through what could be very stressful for you, it helps talk you through how do you do that in a calm and, and really um, comfortable way in a very uncomfortable environment. That's right. That's right. 
Thank you, Sue. Thank you. So let me pass it over to Chris now, and I'm going to ask you to explain both youth and teen, because I got to be honest, people get confused when they hear the term youth mental health first aid, they immediately think it's for youth, but it's actually not. So can you clarify those two courses? I can. Well, I'll do my very best anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> youth mental health first aid is for anybody who interacts and engages with youth. So for young people, um, and to so really be able to help identify, just like Sue said, and understand signs of a potential mental health crisis or su substance use disorder, um, and not to diagnose. It's funny, we, we keep talking about that, but uh, as I had the extreme honor and privilege to teach my teachers and certify them in mental health, youth mental health first mm -hmm. aid, one of the things I had to keep reminding them is we're not here to diagnose because mm -hmm. it is a instinct of ours to be like, oh, well, you think that this is because such and such. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, it's an empowering tool to really help us start thinking about things from, from a different lens. And it's just not one dimensional. Um, it really teaches us about stigmatizing language um, and provides us with common language so that we can all do right by our kids. It teaches us about misconceptions yeah. uh, and about uh, the data that a lot of us don't realize uh, so that we can make better decisions for our youth. Um, it teaches us about the effects of trauma. And right now we're talking about a global pandemic, uh, <laughs> trauma is affecting all of us from right. birth all the way through to um, our hundreds mm -hmm. and how to utilize our protective factors, especially in schools, especially as youth ministers, especially as coaches. All of these things are protective factors that can help minimize the effects of trauma. So what a powerful tool for our um, youth mental health first aiders to really know how to do that and why it's important. Uh, in youth mental health first aid, uh, we talk about the effects of social media and bullying and the like and how to really mitigate uh, those circumstances. It empowers our adults to know how to respond. And just like Sue said, it really gives us the ability to help in a very difficult situation until a professional can be called, just like with CPR. We don't do heart surgery if somebody's having a heart attack, right? We just mm -mm. Heart, we, we do our best so that the professionals can come in. Um, right. With teen, it's all of the same except we're talking with teenagers and the, the content is very different and it is not as heavy because it really relies on the friendship. You know, um, I, I, when I explain it, I like to say that it's all about the fact that as youth, the first person a youth is going to go to is another youth when they're in yep. trouble. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so for teen mental health first aid, it's an entire grade band, or for us, it was our entire school, which was a heavy mm -hmm. lift. And Annie, you know, because you were my yeah. facilitator. That's right. Yep. Um, and it's five sessions or three sessions. And students learn one, all of them, because you never know what child's either going to engage, encounter, or themselves be in a crisis situation. Um, so it's not just a hand picked honor students or students that say they want it. Right. Them right. All to have it. Right. Um, and they learn an action plan like algae, but it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. They learn how to notice signs. They learn about misconceptions and they get challenged in what they thought or didn't think, especially around substance use and mm -hmm. um, mental health and what's normal, typical. Um, mm -hmm. Typical. Uh, yeah, you know, got to yep. my own language. We all have to watch that, right? <laughs> They learn how to be able to then get help from a trusted adult because we cannot have our, our youth be that person that bears that responsibility and why it's okay and why it's never okay to hold on to that secret. And it empowers them mm -hmm. to be able to activate that plan and practice that plan. As an adult, being able to say something to somebody, are you thinking about committing um, uh, have, look, I still struggle with it, you know, or taking your own life. Um, instead of saying, thinking about hurting yourself and why that's different and mm -hmm. practicing and modeling that and then knowing what people in the building and what resources they can connect with. Mm -hmm. It's so critical for them to be able to have that tool in their toolkit. And hopefully they never need to use it. But the reality, right. most of them likely will. Right. And and them having it is is just, um, like you said, a tool in the toolbox. Right. And and I think it, I think it's important to note, too, for our viewers who may not be familiar with the teen offering is that this is done with um, 
connection to a school. So Chris and I had the uh, great privilege to offer it in the state of Delaware at the school where Chris is a principal. But this was in a pilot situation and not every school in Delaware has um, provided, uh, has been connected to this tool quite yet. And with the pandemic, it's kind of slowed the, uh, <laughs> slowed that um, rollout a bit. But I can say that if you're in Delaware and you'd like to learn more about teen mental health first aid, we'd be happy at NAMI Delaware to try to connect you to, to um, next steps for that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so speaking of the pandemic, <laughs> do you think as instructors, do you think you had um, any additional supports just in your own personal toolbox going into this pandemic just as instructors? Yeah, it's Sue. I, I have to say, had I not been through this, personally, my own mental health, which has degraded, I will say, during this, this crisis, being home for six months, um, I, I don't think I would have been able to navigate it as well as I am. And by having these these skills, not only was I able to recognize when I myself was starting to decline and that I needed to reach out and leverage some of the tools we teach others, it's also helped me be more kind and more understanding of my coworkers and my family and my friends who are all in different situations. Some are forced to go to work and they're afraid to. Others, like myself, were forced to be at home. I've never met my colleagues because I started wow. a new job in the middle yeah. of the pandemic. And the general, the practical tools and techniques that mental health first aid uh, educates you on. It, it can be used in everyday life and, and not just with, you know, mental health, but just how we communicate with others and how we recognize um, that we need to support each other as a whole community. So that's uh, my long winded way of saying, yes, it's helped me help myself and others throughout the last six months. Thank you. How about you, Chris? Yeah, the same. I mean, the confidence, knowledge is power, right? So it's another, mm -hmm. um, tool again in our toolbox and it's a way to for us to differentiate and to diversify what it is that we're doing so for my personal kids um looking for warning signs from mm -hmm. we talk about self-care and mental health first aid so That's making right. sure that we were really looking at self-care and being really thoughtful for my conversations with my colleagues for my twitter tweets from <laughs> being kind and being thoughtful um to the conversations with my kids you know, it gave me that, I've said it many times now, that common language to reach out and say, don't forget about self-care. Why is it important? Are you taking care of this? Are you considering that? And uh, that was really critical for us. And that door was already open. So it was a door opener for us to continue conversations except instead of being in a crisis situation, which the pandemic was a crisis situation. Sure, sure. Where you have to start those conversations. The, the the floor was already laid for us. And That's that right. was so important. Absolutely. Thank you. I, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I think it's exactly, um, I think being instructors of it provided us a little more background, but I think even people who attend it would have probably, like you said, a foundation or that door was already open. So we're, I mean, we'd love to hear from anybody who's tuning in right now who might have taken mental health first aid and would like to comment on that. But um, absolutely managing this six month long crisis and ongoing one that continues every day requires a lot of us. And, you know, Sue, I just want to back up and, and thank you for, for sharing your personal experience a little bit. I think that's so important that, that you're able to, to do that and that you're comfortable doing that. That's that's modeling such um, such such good um, mental health care, re really, and then self care. Being able to advocate and say, you know what, this has been really hard. Yeah, I think more you. of us need to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I, I the first time I went through a mental health crisis, I never understood the tools and techniques, and going through one again, I. I'm so happy to have this foundation. And as you said, Annie, whether you're a facilitator or you've attended the class, there's lots of great self-care tips that are shared that you can use on yourself and help others with. Right, right. So you, Sue, you referenced your, your previous experience with a mental health problem. That was during your work in the corporate world. Would yes. you say that mental health yeah. first aid would be a good tool in the corporate setting? Having having it available to, to the workforce. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. 
I think in many cases, um, we try to separate personal and professional. And the reality is we're one person. And when you go to work, if you're struggling with declining mental health or mental health crisis, it's with you all the time. And people may see it or recognize it, or you may recognize it in, in employees and coworkers. By having this type of education in any work environment, not just a high stress corporate environment, all work is, is stressful, people would have a common language to Chris's point and a foundation that we are all comfortable sharing and talking openly about mental health. We have no issues helping someone with a broken leg if you gotta grab their coffee or help them with their backpack. I carry my laptop in a backpack. No issues helping someone with that. We have no issues if someone says, hey, I'm a diabetic, I need to pop up at XYZ time to you know, take care of myself. Yet we don't often enough say, I see you're acting a little differently this week. Is everything okay? You know, you're 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 not the same bubbly, joyful self that you are, and opening up that door. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we need to be brave enough to say, I am struggling right now, and yeah. this is what I need for self-care. And you have to say that to someone in the work environment as well. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much for for sharing that. So, Chris, you're you're actually in your school right now. So, how's it going? And and how <laughs> would you say that you're um you're, you've kind of already shared that the teachers who work with you have had um, youth mental health first aid. Is that really helping in your particular situation right now? Yeah. But I want to say a couple of things. I would like to okay. To reply to Sue there, and yes, yeah. my teachers are amazing, by the way. But you already know that. Yeah, I do know that. You're right. So uh, in terms of what Sue's saying, and that's another big piece of this uh, mental health first aid, it's not just about, oh, there's crisis and, you know, we don't have that much mental health crisis. We don't need it. It's about that destigmatizing and the normalization of it. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. You know, I, we have, Annie, you have all the tools relative to all the trainings, right? But we all struggle and it's okay. Yeah. And it's okay to be like, I'm not feeling it today and I need to do this for me. And having those conversations on a everyday basis and being okay with it and yeah. everybody sharing is what makes it so awesome because it's okay to not be okay. And right. people need to not be ashamed to be able to talk that way and from modeling it. So from, from the principal to the corporate world to wherever, it's just amazing. And that yeah. is exactly what I think is the power behind the mental health first aid. So it's, it's, knowing when there's a crisis, but it's appreciating even when there's not. Mm -hmm. um, back to our school and our teachers. Yes. Um, it, it's still a struggle. We still worry. We still wonder. Um, and mm -hmm. we struggle through this pandemic. We're still struggling through our virtual programming right now and our remote programming and balance. But yeah. um, I can tell you I, during the pandemic in the spring, you know, mm -hmm. having our kids reach out to different trusted adults saying that they needed help or they knew somebody else needed help. Um, before we went out after the team mental health and while we were still in team mental health first aid, having our students come in and talk about the um, that they stayed with a friend of theirs who didn't even go to our school and use the mental health uh, hotline, 741-741. And I could be coming across there soon. Yeah, the crisis text line, yep. sure. And saying that they used it, it helped. And then they wanted their trusted adult in the building to follow up with them. Oh, that's so they, awesome. That, that didn't happen once. That didn't happen twice. That happened many, many times. And so right there, even if you just save one kid, I mean, that's enough in my world. Sure. Um, we're not here to save them, but in order to help them yeah. be able yeah. to have that power. And if we can prevent one kid from dying and one mm -hmm. kid from regretting not knowing how to help somebody, I mean, as right. an adult, I know I've lost many kids in my career to mm -hmm. um, suicide and to, to many things. And I hope that nobody has to do that. And this, again, mm -hmm. gives the tools to be able to do that. So valuable, 100 percent useful every day. And how timely was it that we had just concluded the teen program right as the pandemic was beginning? They had the tools right then. That was amazing. Now, I wouldn't. Always I, yeah. Somebody's always looking out for me, Annie. Yeah. Whew. 
man, that was great timing. We got really lucky with that. And I'm looking forward to doing it again. Hopefully we can do that again soon. Um, I do want to, I do want to, um, we should probably be wrapping up soon, but I do want to mention to those tuning in about accessing mental health first aid virtually. So this is a very new update to the program. And in fact, the programs themselves had been updated already. So there's a 2.0 version of the youth and the adult class. It can be offered in a blended format or it can be offered all virtually. Um, and right now, most, most facilitators, at least in Delaware, are doing it virtually. So what this involves is um, participants sign up and they take the first um, section of the course independently. So they can, you know, take it on in their own time frame and just complete it as as they can. And then just as long as they're finished by the time the meeting is planned, then um, they're good to go. So then they meet with us on Zoom and take the course that way. So it involves videos, it involves activities. Sue was mentioning how how, how involved it, the courses are and even virtually they are. We're using um, activities through breakout rooms and other um, strategies to really bring about conversation. So this is not like a webinar type thing. We've all been on those <laughs> and probably more recently. This is not that at all. People are expected to use their camera if they can and to really be con like really uh, in tune the entire time. Um, so it's important for, for everyone who's tuning in, whether you're in Delaware or outside of Delaware, to know that this is still available to you, even during the pandemic. We want you to get connected. Um, youth and adult are being offered virtually. Um, as things begin to open up, it can also be offered um, the, the blended so that the second part isn't on Zoom, it's in person. Um, but everybody should be connected to it in any way you'd like. Um, even now during the pandemic, just find out more. I see a comment just popped up um, from Leslie. What might be a first step from someone who's almost 20, has had mental illness her entire life and is ready for a change? Okay. Hi, Leslie. So I'm guessing, well, let me, let me toss it to Sue or Chris. What do you all think about that? What might be a first step is what she's asking. I'm going to start with your first step is being young and recognizing this early on. I, it took me till I was 50 to recognize it. Um, so kudos to you. I, I would say one of the first steps is actively looking at some of the programs that NAMI offers to just help you get comfortable with having that conversation. I know personally, I did not share with my family and friends initially. It was actually, you know, people a little bit farther outside my group. I needed to learn the right language to share that. And if you choose to participate in mental health first aid, so much of what you learn there, you can apply to yourself as well as others. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, if Leslie's interested in taking the class and enjoys it and wants to be an instructor, that's something you can you can learn about, too. And I think Wesley's just helped us by adding the information about becoming an instructor into the comment section of this chat. So if you'd like to be an instructor, we, we would recommend that you take the class first. <laughs> but then, you know, find out how you can do that. And if we locally can help you, we'd be happy to try. Um, I can't I don't know of any instructor trainings locally at this time, but we can certainly look into it for you if you're interested. Um, okay, well, um, I think Chris, you covered the the one thing I had a note to myself about with this 2.0 version, including so much on self care. I absolutely love that. Um, did you notice that too when you went through the virtual part? That I there's did. just more. Yeah, yeah, and we can all use that whether we're instructors of, of mental health first aid or participants or anyone at all. Self care is an important piece, but this is focusing on the self care for the mental health first aider. So once you learn these skills that everyone's talking about that Sue and Chris have shared, you also need to balance that with making sure you're taking care of yourself so that you're, you're feeling the best you can to help other people. You can't help yourself if you're not, or you can't help others if you're not ready to uh, not helping yourself. Um, very can't well. Pour from an empty cup. That's right. You can't pour from an empty cup. That's right. And I had another note to myself that basically the course, Sue, you, you, you had it in four words. I had it down to three, but I have to say I stole it from the mental health first aid website. <laughs> you oh, came up with your four words <laughs> and I, I looked up the, the three words. So the three words are identify, understand, respond. And those are the things that you learn in this course. So we really hope that, um, 
that viewing this video has been helpful to you. We thank you. Thank you for your questions. Um, we have a question about the website. Don't see the course listing. So we don't have, um, we don't offer the course for trainings ourselves. The mentalhealthfirstaid.org offers it. Mm -hmm. And I think you can, um, that one of the drop downs is get trained. So I'd be happy to, to talk with you offline um, if, you, if you'd like. Um, but we definitely need to sign off now because I've kept you all longer than I promised. So thank you so much, Sue and Chris. And it was so great to see you and so great to talk to you. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Have a great one, everybody. Bye.